What does it mean when it says the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth? I'm saying that that, that means that you can't assume that there's all the truth that's already there in the New Testament writings. But there's various reasons why you can't assume that anyway, because the New Testament writings don't say that they contain all the truth. They don't say that the Old Testament contains all the truth. But when you've got a phrase like, the Spirit will lead you into all truth, you've got a distinct statement that's telling you that there may be more truth which goes on being revealed to you after the last New Testament document is written. It doesn't mean there is, it just means you can't know by simply reading the New Testament. So you need some other authority if you're going to be, be sure. And this church that Jesus establishes seems to be the only vehicle, I can't think of any other, you might have another one, the only vehicle which enables you to have access to what God's thinking on this is. The only alternative would be the individual believer himself, which is a you know, 16th century idea. The individual believer himself is inspired by the Holy Spirit, is led into truth by the Holy Spirit. But that seems to me to have created chaos outside of the Catholic world. And it would create chaos anyway, because we're all different. And though we may say we have the Holy Spirit, we tend to disagree a lot. Yeah, but, but the thing about it is that, um, regarding what you say, uh, what, what I try and do is actually take stock from how the apostles did it. Because you know, when I, read, uh, I, I mentioned this before about the Apostle Paul, when he uh, taught the Gentiles from the Law and the Prophet. So if after, if near the end of his life, he was still using the Law and Prophets to, to teach about the Kingdom of God and Jesus, that means as far as he was concerned, he didn't actually need any other writings. And so he'd already had the full revelation that's necessary because then if something was revealed in the years that led up to that, that time near his, his, his end, then he'd have been using something apart, the Law and the Prophets, and then something else as well. But he never said that he did. Well, I think that um, in St. Paul, you don't just get, in his writings, you don't just get repetitions of the Law and the Prophets. In the letter to the Romans and the two letters, well, First Corinthians, particularly Galatians, you've got a whole theological setup being set before us. And so I think he's he's an example of one because the, the apostles, yes, can be directly inspired by the Holy Spirit, and they're giving us new doctrine, just as Jesus gave us new doctrine. When they die, there's no more new doctrine. But there can be the working out of the implications of what they taught by word of mouth and by letter to refer to St. Paul's phrase. Mm. And the problem is knowing what was revealed by word of mouth, because we've got letter, but we actually, some don't think about the fact that when St. Paul says, you know, hold fast to the traditions you receive from us, whether received by word of mouth or by letter, we don't even know whether we've got all the letters. So we can only rely upon what tradition has come down to us, which includes the letters that have been, fortunately have been preserved, the 27 documents in here. But the further unwritten traditions that we find almost certainly being expressed in the very early century, centuries, first century, second century. And that, of course, can only be known through the organs of the church. Because after all, the writers of church documents tend to be bishops of the Catholic Church. Yeah. And that's how we, um, that's how we form our Catholic theology. Mm.